Hey guys, it's Seawheel HD here, and today I'm going to show you how to run Game Boy, DS, N64, and other retro consoles on an iPhone. No crazy jailbreaks or modding needed, and it only takes 5 to 10 minutes to be playing your favorite Pokemon or Mario games. So let's get into it. So you really only need three apps to get this fully working. The App Store, a web browser, and your Files app. The app we need to download is called Delta, and it's publicly available so you don't have to find some sketchy website or anything. Just open up the App Store, type in Delta, and it should be one of the first results. No, not you, Delta Airlines. Looks like this, and it's completely free, so just hit the download and wait for it to finish. Fun fact, the logo looks all jank because this was the original logo, and then Adobe was like, hey, this looks a little too similar to our logo. But now Adobe's in hot water anyway, so haha. But anyway, once Delta is downloaded, you can open it up. Right away, you'll notice that you don't have any games installed, which makes sense, as we gotta import them. Which brings us to the part that always causes some angry commenters, getting the games. Unfortunately, I am not allowed to show you the exact websites to get the games from. Nintendo already keeps a close eye on my channel, as they made me remove a section of my Switch on PC tutorial, and completely took down my Animal Crossing modding video that had over 100k views. So I'm in their crosshairs at the moment. But all I'm going to say is Google game name and then add ROM at the end. This should bring up some websites and Reddit posts if you need help. Be careful on some of these game sites, they have a ton of ads on them, so make sure you find the correct download button. Most of the time, it will not be the big green button that says download. You'll likely get a zip file, but I have one already saved on my Google Drive for Pokemon Emerald. Regardless, it should give you the option to save it in your files app. So switch over and find the zip file you just got. You can either long press on the file and select uncompress, or just by tapping on it, it should unzip the file, giving you access to the actual file we need. Here is a list of the consoles and file types each one accepts on Delta. I downloaded Pokemon Emerald and it gave me a GBA file, which is perfect. Since we've run Delta already, clicking on the file should automatically open it and install it in there for you. If that doesn't work, simply click on the plus button in the top right and select import from files and relocate the same one. But now, for most of you, that is all there is to it. If you import multiple games from different consoles, it stores them on separate screens in the menu. All you gotta do is swipe left or right. So just click on the game you want to play, and boom, it pulls up and runs right away. Depending on the console you're playing, you'll get a nice on-screen layout of the buttons that that console has, usually copying the layout from the original controller. I personally love how the Game Boy looks, feels like I have a Game Boy just in my pocket now. You can also rotate your phone and have a more comfortable layout if you have big hands. It usually makes the game larger as well. So again, here's a list of consoles you can play and the file types it supports. For 7 out of the 8 consoles here, this is all the setup you need to start playing. We're not done yet though, there's still a bunch of really cool features and customization you can do. But first, you may be wondering what that one outlier is. Well, if you want to play DS games, there is an extra step. We need extra BIOS files for DS to actually run those games. Quick side note, it does say on the Delta website that Delta version 1.6 will remove this requirement, so if you're watching this video in the future and 1.6 is already out, then you don't even need to do this step. But I'll still show it for now. If you click on the options gear in the top left of the Delta home screen and scroll down, you should see core settings with Nintendo DS as the only option. Upon going in there at the bottom, you'll see DS BIOS files with three required tabs, which now brings us to another fabulous segment of, I can't show you exactly where to get these files, but I'll point you in the right direction. All I did was Google DS BIOS files and websites and Reddit should show up. Delta is fairly new and a lot of people are in the same boat trying to get these files, so they should be pretty easy to find. Again, we need to download bios7.bin, bios9.bin, and firmware.bin. I found a website that gives you all three, and it's a similar process to the games. Just download and save them in your files app, and once all three are in, open Delta Backup and click on bios7bin first. This will auto open your files app, so just find that file and it should give a check mark next to it now. Repeat this step for the other two, and once all three have check marks, you are all set. Not too bad, even though it is an extra step, but it is worth it to be able to play DS games on your phone. And if 1.6 is already out, you won't even need to do this. But now, if you import a DS file, you'll be able to launch and play the same way as the others. I'm pretty impressed with myself that I was able to still remember the trick on New Super Mario Bros. DS to unlock Luigi right away. Haha. <laughs> So while this is already pretty sweet, there's even more you can do, and a lot of personalization options, so stick around. 
When playing on any console, you may notice a bonus menu button on your controller. This brings up a menu which is how you close out of games to switch around, but also includes some bonus features. Save state, load state, cheat codes, fast forward, and hold buttons. These are pretty self-explanatory if you've used an emulator before, but I'll run through them all quick. Save state allows you to save your game at that exact spot. So if you're playing a game that doesn't let you save all the time, or you just really need a save point to come back to, just click on the plus button in the top right. Then at any time, you can use load state to jump back to that exact point. Fast forward is another handy one. It just speeds up the game a lot. So if you're grinding Pokemon battles for XP, want to travel somewhere faster, or skip through walls of text, this is very helpful. As you can see here, I accidentally went too fast and ran into a doubles battle. But luckily I had a save state right before, so I just loaded that and got out of there. See, useful. Next is hold buttons. After clicking it, it tells you to press the buttons you want held down and then press the menu button once you're done. Now, when back in the game, the button or buttons you pressed will automatically be held down constantly. I thought at first this meant it constantly mashed the button for you, but it just keeps it held down. Kind of tough to show here, but I selected to hold down the B button, so now all I have to do is press the D-pad and my character will automatically be running. Not sure how useful this really is though, I never use it while playing, but maybe there's a game that would really benefit from this. Anyway, last but not least in this menu is cheat codes. Here, you can add codes just like you would on those original action replays or game sharks. They made this menu very user friendly, you can give the cheat codes a name, choose what kind of code it is, and then paste it in there, which gets auto-formatted to the option you chose. I had two codes I wanted to try out for Pokemon Emerald, Walk Through Walls, and Shiny Pokemon. For some of these games, they require a master cheat code. This is the one I found for Emerald, and most cheats won't work for the game without it, so just add this one first, and then the codes you want to try in a separate entered cheat code. First up is Walk Through Walls. I'll post these in the description if you want to try them out, but again, they only work for Pokemon Emerald and with the master code on. For some weird reason though, this caused my game to slow down tremendously, so sorry about the footage, but it still shows that the cheat code worked, I just don't know why this makes the game so laggy. You can then select which cheat code to have on by tapping on them, and a check mark will show or disappear. Now I just have the master code and shiny Pokemon, which does not make the game lag. But this one works too, which is sweet, now all wild Pokemon are shiny. So those were all the menu options, but there's still more things to cover. On the homepage, you'll notice my Pokemon Emerald came pre-installed with the cover art, but other games like ROM Hacks will just have this gray Delta logo as the default. If you long press on the cover, you should see an option to change artwork, which lets you open up your photos library and import any pictures you want. I'm going with this goofy zoom in on Jolteon, look at this little guy. So yeah, if you have games that didn't have cover art or want to change the original ones out, you can. Next up are controller skins. Pressing on the settings gear brings up this menu, and there's the controller skin section close to the top. Clicking on one will show the default skins that you saw when you first launched a game, but you can change these out. Just tap on one, then press on the plus icon in the top right to open your files again. You will have to download more files from online to change the skin, but on the Delta website itself, they have links to websites that host a bunch of options. I went through and found this sketch GBA skin, so I just downloaded it, went back to the Delta menu we're on, and then imported it from there. Now when I launch a GBA game, it shows this instead. So you can do this with all the consoles and some skins even change the button layout for that if you want. All right, next is one of my favorite features. You may have noticed each time I go into the settings menu, the top options are controllers. Well, you can actually pair and play with any Bluetooth controller, even a Switch Pro controller, which is what I'm gonna be doing. Go into your phone settings and find the Bluetooth menu. Make sure it's on and then begin searching for a pair through the controller. If you're using a Pro controller, just hold the tiny top button next to the USB-C port. It should pop up on your phone, so just tap on it and wait till it says connected. Now switch back to Delta and it should auto switch over from touchscreen to Pro controller. And now if you launch the game, you'll be able to fully control it with the Pro controller. Also makes the screen look cleaner by removing the touchscreen buttons. And the final thing I want to show, importing and exporting saves. If you have a save file that you really want to keep or transfer, you can lock press on the game and select export save data. This will bring up your file so you can save it anywhere you want. You could even send your save file to a friend if you want to show them a Pokemon you got or something. Importing is the same thing, just in reverse. You find the save file, select it, and it auto imports for you. So if you wanted a complete save file, just find one online and import that baby in there. This is also really helpful if you're switching devices and don't want to lose all your progress. So with that, I think I've covered everything I wanted to for the Delta emulator on iPhone. Enjoy playing those classic games anywhere and everywhere. I've been traveling a lot recently and this has been clutch being able to pull out a Pokemon game anywhere I want. 
and the app doesn't even use a lot of battery, so I was playing Emerald my entire 4 hour flight with no problem. I never thought the day would come where Apple would actually allow an emulator app on their app store. I used to have to download GBA for iOS off of sketchy websites and have it break a month later. So this has been a really long time coming and a real dream come true. But that's really all I got. Not sure if they're going to release other consoles on this thing like 3DS. I don't even know if iPhones can run 3DS that well. So I guess we'll see. But for now, I'm going to get up out of here. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, see ya!